वेरी वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग द न्यू लाइसियम प्लेटफॉर्म पर आपका एक बार फिर से स्वागत है लिटरेरी क्रिटिसिज्म की सीरीज चल रही है दैट इज यूनिट नंबर एट ऑफ यूजीसी नेट सिलेबस एंड इन दैट सीरीज वी हैव कम टू टुडे टू पोएट्स एंड टू क्रिटिक्स टॉमस लपिकॉक एंड फिलिप सिडनी सॉरी टॉमस लपिकॉक्स अटैक ऑन पोएट्री एंड पी वी शाल इज डिफेंस of poetry actually in the elizabethan age poetry was attacked by stephen gosson and then it was defended by sir philip sidney and here in romantic age the poetry was attacked by thomas lub peacock and here it was defended by percy wish shelley right first let's see the grounds on which grounds mr thomas lub peacock attacked poetry Thomas Le Peacock gives a survey of entire poetry starting from the Greek age and he divided entire history of English poetry into four parts starting with the iron age coming to the golden age then silver age then brass age but these four ages are the ages of poetry in the views of Thomas Le Peacock and Thomas Le Peacock says that currently in the romantic period poetry has lost its value it is totally useless in the era of industrialization in the era of modernization there is no value of poetry and pb shali says how can anybody say that poetry is valueless poets are the legislators poets are the law makers poets are the prophets and how can their voices how can their writings be valueless and even whatever we have in the written form that was written by a poet kisi poet ne to sab kuch likha hai to poetry can never be irrelevant poetry can never be useless the contention ha mr p b shelley ka four ages of poetry first age is of iron age and second age is of golden age generally when we see the periods of literature periods of poetry first we see the golden age and here mr thomas le peacock starts the age from the iron age and in his view the iron age was the age when people were illiterate people were illiterate and poetry was in the form of oral only oratory was there not literature and poets kaun the poets were the slaves to the kings slaves to the warriors slaves to the princes and they used to sing in honor of in memory of their victories their uh, war mongering unke favor mein likha karte the kyon likha karte the in order to gain wine right in order to be intoxicated they used to write poetry ye contention ha mr thomas le peacock ka apne iron age ke poetry par and from iron is poetry they he comes to the golden age of poetry and in the view of thomas le peacock the golden age of poetry belongs to homer homer belongs to the golden age then he comes to the silver age silver age may two types ki poetry original poetry and imitative poetry and it was preoccupied the silver age was preoccupied by the poets like virgil and then finally he comes to the brass age right i dekhte hain details that is also important for your examination the essay four ages of poetry was published in a misalini right in a magazine called literary misalini in 1820 right literary misalini in 1820 this was the magazine in which the essay of thomas le peacock was published basically it was a satirical perspectives on the historical and societal role of poetry history of poetry and societal role of poetry but it is an attack and where classical saw the order of ages as i told you as gold silver bronze and finally iron right ye क्लासिकल्स न्यू क्लासिकल्स एंड क्लासिकल लिटरेरी क्रिटिक्स का काम था कि दे डिवाइडेड द हिस्ट्री ऑफ अ पोएट्री इनटू फोर एजेस गोल्डन पीरियड देन सिल्वर पीरियड देन ब्रांजे पीरियड एंड देन आयरन आयरन केम 
टू द एंड राइट लीस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट लीस्ट सिग्निफिकेंस जो रह गया बट थॉमस लिकॉक स्टार्ट फ्रॉम द आयरन एज एंड देन ही कम्स टू द गोल्डन एज देन ही कम्स टू सिल्वर एज एंड देन ही कम्स टू ब्रास एज देर इज नो ब्रांजे इन थॉमस लव पीकॉक थॉमस लव पीकॉक टॉक्स अबाउट द ब्रास एज राइट गोल्डन आयरन एज आयरन गोल्ड सिल्वर आयरन गोल्ड सिल्वर एंड ब्रास दीज आर द फोर एजेज ऑफ पोट्री according to thomas love peacock four ages of poetry according to thomas love peacock iron age comes first followed by the golden age golden age is followed by the silver age and finally brass age the classical division was gold followed by silver followed by bronze and then iron right according to the classics iron was at the last and according to thomas le peacock iron age begins the history of poetry all right so this is the two difference between the classical age history of classical age poetry and new and romantic is jaisa ki thomas le peacock ko samajh aa raha hai now he comes to the iron age and according to him iron age is the rudimentary age basic age when poetry was not in the written form in fact at that time poetry was in only oral form and it was basically a poem that was written to eulogize someone to praise someone panegyric poetry jisko kaha jata hai in honor of someone jisko likha jata tha as in india you know that there were court poets court poets were there in england as well and court poets were supposed to write in honor of king write about their victories about their virtuousness about their bravery about their courage wo likhna hota tha and iron age ke jo poets the iron as is the primitive age primitive means beginning basic primitive panegyric supplied by bards under the pressure from royal warriors and in exchange for liquor itself and inspiration in iron age poets were not free poets were not independent they were under the kings they were the slaves and why did they write they were forced to write and what did they get they get liquor and liquor was the source of inspiration for them right for the iron age poets ye point number 1 ha as opined by thomas love peacock next point par peacock explains that poetry is four ages as the time before written literature right the iron age is the age that was before the written literature in which rude bards celebrate in rough numbers the exploits of rude chief bards were rude and ruders were the king and bards were rude rude means impolite bard means poets poets were impolite and uh, their kings their chiefs were impolite too. even they were ahead in the field of impoliteness and these two made the poetry during the iron age all rude and uncivilized people express themselves in the manner which we call poetical this is a very very important quotation from thomas love peacock peacocks ki who are the poets poets are the rude and uncivilized people and they express themselves in the manner which we call poetical the manner that such poets such bards use us ko kya kehte hain wo kehte most unpoetical hai and poets have become most unpoetical this was the contention of thomas love peacock all right and after the iron age we come to the golden age not only we but thomas love peacock comes to the golden age and the golden age is the age in which 
पोएट्री बिकम्स रिट्रोस्पेक्टिव पोएट्री बिकम्स रिट्रोस्पेक्टिव मींस पोएट्स स्टार्टेड टू सिंग अबाउट द पास्ट पास्ट विक्ट्रीज पास्ट वॉरियर्स पास्ट प्रिंसेस पास्ट किंग्स दे स्टार्टेड टू फोकस ऑन रिट्रोस्पेक्शन दिस इज द गोल्डन एज एंड द बेस्ट एग्जांपल ऑफ गोल्डन एज पोएट्री इज होमर Homer wrote the epics like Odyssey and Iliad, and in Odyssey and Iliad he recounted the victory of Achilles. He recount uh, he recounted the victories of Agamemnon and uh, Odysseus. Right? Usko recount karta hai. That is the retrospection. Right? This is the age of Homer. The golden age of poetry. Right? Which is the golden age of poetry? age of homer is known as the golden age of poetry and golden age ki poetry jo hai retrospective poetry hai iron age ki poetry rude poet wrote about ruder chiefs golden age poetry is retrospective homer is the prime example of golden age poetry and after golden age we come to the नेक्स्ट एज जस्ट बिफोर आई स्टार्ट द नेक्स्ट एज पोएट्री इज मो एंड आर्ट इट रिक्वायर्स ग्रेटर स्किल इन नंबर्स ग्रेटर कमांड ऑफ लैंग्वेज मोर एक्सटेंसिव एंड वेरियस नॉलेज एंड ग्रेटर कंप्रहेंसिवनेस ऑफ माइंड इट स्टिल एग्जिस्ट विदाउट राइवल्स इन एनी अदर डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ लिटरेचर and even the arts painting and sculpture certainly and music probably are comparatively rude and perfect right it is still exists without rivals in any other department what is it it is poetry poetry is more an art poetry is not merely inspiration but poetry is more about art poetry is an skill anybody who is skilled in the field of poetry can write it right greater command of language skill in numbers skill in greater command of language more extensive and various knowledge and greater comprehensiveness of mind it still exists without rivals in any field right koi rival hi nahi hai iska in other department of literature and even the arts paintings sculpture certainly and music probably are comparatively rude and imperfect all right painting sculpture music sab kya hai ye sab rude hai imperfect hai the whole field of intellect is its own it has no rivals in history nor in philosophy nor in science it is cultivated by the greatest intellects of the age and listened to by all the rest this is the age of homer the golden age of poetry poetry has now attained its perfection it has attained the point which it cannot pass genius therefore seeks new forms for the treatment of the same subjects has the lyric poetry of pindar and alkias and the tragic poetry of aeschylus and sophocles now he says that poetry got its perfection in the golden age when homer was writing when pindar was writing when aeschylus was writing no perfection is left and since no perfection is left there should not be any poetry there koi poetry nahi honi chahiye and there are currently presently various ways to express themselves there are various ways to achieve perfection then why should we stick to poetry since we cannot be homo since we cannot be aeschylus since we cannot be sophocles poetry is an art it could be mastered and it was mastered by homo Homer wrote the poems people gather and they listen to the recitings of the poet right and after poet after homer we come to the silver age and the silver age is divided into two types of poetry poetry of civilized life jo hai silver age as the poetry of civilized life with the, with two kinds of poetry that is imitative 
and original. The imitative which recasts the poetry of the gold age and the primary poet of the silver age who was recasting the history of the previous age was Virgil. Virgil wrote his epic Aeneid and the characters of Aeneid were very much similar, were drawn from Homer's Iliad and Odyssey. That's why he says that there are two kinds of poetry during the Silver Age. First one was the recasting of the previous poets, right? That is the imitative, which recasts the poetry of the Age of Gold. Imitative poetry and the second one was the original poetry. The original were chiefly comic, didactic and satiric in which there is fastidiousness of style and choice harmony of expression that bores by its repetitiveness. When he comes to the originality, originality kya karte hai? Originality creates fastidiousness. Originality bores everyone by its repetitiveness. It is only obvious moral truism that lend themselves to poetic expressions and as the sciences of morals and mind mature, they move beyond the reach of imaginative and emotional treatment. Since there is limited scope for polished versification of good sense and elegant learning, poetry declined towards uh, extinction. Or silver age se kya hota hai? Poetry decline karna shuru ho jati hai. Decline towards extinction or extinct ho jati hai. Khatam ho jati hai. Right after silver is till imitation was working, till recast, uh, jaha, recasting was working, everything was fine. But when poets started to create something new, poetry became, poetry went towards extinction. Right? And according to Thomas Lepicock, what are the functions of the poets? The poet of the Iron Age celebrates the achievements of his contemporaries. Poets of the Iron Age, that was the poet age before writing age, right? Then, kya kya unhone? They celebrated the victories of their chiefs. They celebrated the victories of the kings and princes for the sake of liquor in the Iron Age. Golden Age mein kya hota hai? The poet of the age of gold celebrates the heroes of the age of iron. Iron Age ke heroes ko celebrate karte hai. Golden is ki poetry and then we come to the silver age. Silver is ki poetry recasts the poems of the age of gold. Age of gold ke poetry ko recast karti ha, recount karti ha, retell karti ha. Right? Golden age, iron age, golden age and then silver age. Alright? Function of poets. And then two kinds of poetry as I told you, imitative poetry and original poetry, right? Imitative poetry and original poetry, imitative poetry was uh, the poetry written in imitation of the Homo, in imitation of the golden age poets and original poetry was basically satiric, basically didactic, basically comic and during this uh, imitative poetry, uh, jo, uh, original poetry mein jo poets aate hai, they were Minando who is known as father of new comedy and Aristophanes who is known as father of old comedy and basically they were satiric poets. Horace and Juvenal they were satirists. The poetry of this age is characterized by an exquisite and fastidious selection of words and a labored and somewhat monotonous harmony of expression. Right, original poetry went towards monotony. And then the final age, the fourth age, that is the age of brass. The age of brass rejects the polish and learning of the age of silver. The right? age of brass is the age of rejection. It rejects the polished matter, the polished content of the silver period. Now we are in classical age. Abhi hum classical se contemporary age par aayenge, fir dekhiega. Right? and regresses to the crude barbarism of the age of iron which pretending to return to nature and revive the age of gold. You can just guess that here through the brass age 
Thomas Le Peacock was addressing the romantic poetry. Before the age of romanticism, there was an age in which polished language and polished content regimentation was mandatory and that was the age of neoclassical period, Augustan period. Wordsworth and Coleridge rejected that formula, rejected the theory of neoclassical poetry and Wordsworth concluded that poets should be speaking to men and the content of the poetry, language of the poetry should be taken from the common man, should be taken from the everyday life. और इसी को ब्रास एज कह करके उसको रिजेक्ट करता है, उसको खत्म करने की कोशिश करता है। राइट, right? रिजेक्शन करता है, उसको खत्म करता है। The current brass era is marked according to Peacock by poems of verbos and minutely detailed description of thoughts, passions, actions, persons and things. In the brass age, the poet is semi-barbarian. Brass age mein poet kya ho gaya hai? Semi-barbarian in a civilized community. Community is civilized and poet has become semi-barbarian. Or semi-barbarian kaise hua hai? Semi-barbarian is liye hua hai. Kyunki in the age of पोएट्री कैसी पोएट्री लिख रहा है वो ही इज गोइंग बैक टू नेचर गोइंग बैक टू द वाइल्ड लाइफ गोइंग बैक टू द रिवर्स गोइंग बैक टू द फॉरेस्ट वहां पर जाकर Alright, so this is the golden age of poetry. It has been done in a different way. The current brass era is marked according to Peacock by poems of verbos and minutely detailed description of thoughts, passions, actions, persons and things. The current brass era is marked according to Peacock by poems of verbos and minutely detailed description of thoughts, passions, actions, persons and things. In the brass age, the poet is a semi-barbarian in a civilized community. Community is civilized and poet is not civilized. He is semi barbarian right then comes the age of brass which by rejecting the polish and the learning of the age of silver and taking a retrograde stride to the barbarism and edu tradition of the age of iron professes to return to nature and revive the age of gold who was talking about return to nature it was russo russo was talking about return to nature ye unka motto tha और वो बारबेरिक एज उसको बताता है कौन बारबेरिक एज बताता है टॉमस लपिकॉक द आयरन एज ऑफ क्लासिकल पोएट्री मे बी कॉल्ड द बार्डिक द गोल्डन एज इज कॉल्ड होमरिक द सिल्वर एज इज कॉल्ड वजिलियन एंड द ब्रास इज कॉल्ड नॉनिक दीस आर द फोर एजेस अकॉर्डिंग टू टॉमस लपिकॉक आयरन एज इज द क्लासिकल पोएट्री में बार्डिक एज है गोल्डन एज इज होमरिक पीरियड सिल्वर एज इज वर्जिलियन पीरियड एंड ब्रास एज इज द नॉनिक पीरियड एंड फ्रॉम हियर वी कम टू मॉडर्न पोएट्री एंड मॉडर्न पोएट्री इज आल्सो डिवाइडेड इनटू फोर एजेस एंड हियर द फोर एजेस द ग्रेटेस्ट ऑफ इंग्लिश पोएट्स मिल्टन इज सेड टू बी ऑफ द गोल्डन एज राइट Milton may be said to stand alone between the age of gold and age of silver. Right? वो बिल्कुल बीच में खड़े हैं. Combining the excellencies of both, for with all the energy and power and freshness of the first, he united all the studied and elaborate magnificence of the second. Silver age succeeded, beginning with Dryden, coming to perfection with the Pope. And ending with Goldsmith, Collins, and Gray means Roma Renaissance poetry belongs to the Golden Age in the modern context. Neoclassical poetry belongs to the Silver Age. There is no age like Iron because Iron Age was the age of primitive poets when there was no writing at all. So here he talks about the Golden Period, Renaissance period, period of Milton. It's said to be the Golden Period. 
and the neoclassical period the age of restraint the age of polished language the age of poetic diction is called the, uh, is called the silver age the age of dryden age of pope age of goldsmith age of johnson age of uh, collins age of thomas gray this is called the silver age right and uh, romantic poetry was a revolt against this silver age so romantic poetry obviously became the poetry of the age of brass semi barbarian jisko bolta hai ho silver age was the reign of authority but authority now began to be shaken not only in poetry but in the whole sphere of its dominion the contemporaries of thomas gray and cooper were deep and elaborate thinkers right means the new classical poets were deep thinkers they were philosophers and elaborate thinkers the subtle skepticism of hume the solemn irony of gibbon the daring paradoxes of rousseau and the biting ridicule of voltaire directed the energies of four extraordinary minds to shake every portion of the reign of authority reign of authority means the new classical periods ka jo function tha each authority was shaken by voltaire shaken by rousseau shaken by hume and then finally by the poets means the age of authority was totally rejected in the romantic period means the age of jo uh, logic jo tha silver age ka silver age was totally rejected by the semi barbarians by the romantic poets philosophers thinkers and critics right so this was the entire talking on sir thomas love peacock's four ages of poetry right ye unke allegations the ab unke allegation se continue karte hain mr p b shali in his defense of poesy राइट पी बी शाली की डिफेंस ऑफ पोइजी यहीं पर शुरू होती है और इन्होंने तो किसी को छोड़ा ही नहीं था वर्ड्सवर्थ को नहीं छोड़ा रूसो को नहीं छोड़ा कॉलरिज को नहीं छोड़ा सब पर जबरदस्त एलिगेशन लगा दिए थे इन्होंने तो इट वाज द ड्यूटी ऑफ पी बी शाली टू डिफेंड द रोमांटिक क्रीड उसको डिफेंड करना था अकॉर्डिंग टू थॉमस लव पीकॉक द डिस्क्रिप्टिव पोएट्री ऑफ द प्रेजेंट डे हैज बीन कॉल्ड by its cultivators are returned to nature nothing is more impertinent than this pretension poetry cannot travel out of the regions of its birth poetry cannot travel out of the regions of its birth the uncultivated lands of semi civilized men mr wordsworth the great leader of the returners to nature cannot describe a scene under his own eyes without putting into it the shadow of a danish boy or the living ghost of lucy gray or some similar fantastical perturbation of the moods of his own mind right though wordsworth is advocating return to nature but he himself is not following his own precept और इससे ज्यादा इंपॉर्टिनेंट क्या होगा कि ड्यूरिंग द सिविलाइज्ड पीरियड नाउ वी आर सिविलाइज्ड एंड वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट गोइंग बैक टू नेचर व्हाट डज इट मीन वी आर रिटर्निंग टू द प्रिमिटिव एज एंड वर्ड्सवर्थ हिमसेल्फ को क्या बोलता है वर्ड्सवर्थ द ग्रेट लीडर ऑफ द रिटर्नर्स ऑफ नेचर वर्ड्सवर्थ कैन नॉट डिस्क्राइब अ सीन अंडर हिज ओन आईज विदाउट पुटिंग इनटू इट द शैडो ऑफ अ डैनिश बॉय Are the living ghost of Lucy Gray, and then, but barbaric manners. Barbaric manners means the romantic manners. समझिएगा. And supernatural interventions are essential to poetry, either in the scene or in the time or in both. It must be remote from our ordinary perceptions. While the historians and the philosophers are advancing. in accelerating on accelerating the progress of knowledge science is growing philosophers are growing right experimenters are going and poetry is going back all of them are going ahead and poetry is going back right poet is wallowing in the rubbish of departed ignorance 
and wrecking up the ashes of dead savage to find jew gauze and rattles for the grown babies of the age so this was the entire comment on the barbaric age of poetry on the romantic poetry and then he attacks one by one one by one wordsworth ko bhi piche attack kiya tha yahan par dekhiye once again mr wordsworth picks hmm mr wordsworth picks up village legends from old women and sextons and mr colridge to the valuable information acquired from similar sources kya karte hain wo super acts the dreams of the crazy theologians and the mysticism of german metaphysics and favors the world with visions in verse in which the quadruple elements of sexton old woman jamie taylor and immanuel kant are harmonized into a delicious poetical compound actually uh, as i told you in the lecture on uh, samuel taylor coleridge he was much inspired from the german philosophy here thomas lop peacock assembles all those writers and says that mr samuel taylor coleridge was speaking through the mouth of them right he took the raw material from all those philosophers thinkers of germany aur usko apni language mein bolna shuru karte hain right harmonized into delicious poetical compound ye unki imagination ha jo delicious poetical compound bana rahe the samuel taylor coleridge usi par attack hai mr moore presents us with a persian and mr campbell with a pencil banian tail both formed on the same principles as mr sadez epics by extracting from a perfunctory and desultory perusal of a collection of wise and travels all that useful investigation would not seek for and that common sense would reject so here he criticizes wordsworth he criticizes uh, coleridge he criticizes robert sade he criticizes mr moore he criticizes mr campbell right and he criticizes the entire age as a barbarian poetry barbarian age where world is advancing towards a advancement poets are going back to nature it is a retrogression it is not a progression in the words of thomas love peacock and now shelley's defense the defense of poesy defense of poesy was written in 1821 and mr uh, p b shali wanted to get this poem or uh, this essay this defense published in the same magazine in which four ages of poetry published in the literary miscellany but in the after one edition literary miscellany folded and he could not get his defense published it was published in 1840 after the 18 years of the death of sir p b shali and it was got published by his wife mary shali the defense of poetry and in the defense of poetry he outrightly rejects the allegations imposed by mr thomas le peacock and thomas le peacock concentrated focused on the age of reason age of authority and romantic age was the age of imagination and pb shali tried to make a compromise to make a treaty between reason and imagination he first defines the reason and then imagination and says that reason and imagination are not inseparable unko alag alag nahi rakha ja sakta unko alag alag nahi kiya ja sakta hai poetry mimetic hoti hai it is very true it reflects the real world in fact mimesis imitate karti hai right poetry is imitation said by plato said by aristotle then hudas then alan jaynes and then everyone right abhi tak poetry imitation hi hai and in imitation it imitates the real world ye pv shali ka argument tha in the early days of civilization men imitated natural objects observing the order and rhythm of these things and from this impulse was poetry born right and poetry was born in the age of civilization reason and imagination are both important faculties in the mind of the poet what is reason reason is the logical thought reason is the logical thought and imagination kya hai 
imagination is the power of perception reason is logical thought and imagination as perception adding reason respects the differences and imagination the similitude of things reason किसकी रिस्पेक्ट करता है डिफरेंसेस की और इमेजिनेशन सिमिलिट्यूड की सिमिलैरिटी की तो रीजन एंड इमेजिनेशन गो पैरल फ्रॉम रीजन एंड इमेजिनेशन मैन मे रिकॉग्नाइज ब्यूटी एंड इट इज थ्रू ब्यूटी दैट सिविलाइजेशन कम्स रीजन एंड इमेजिनेशन मिल करके ही ब्यूटी को पहचान सकते हैं और सिविलाइजेशन कहां से आती है सिविलाइजेशन हैज बीन डिराइव फ्रॉम ब्यूटी आज इट सेड बाय शैली जैसा शैली का आर्ग्यूमेंट था राइट तो फर्स्ट पॉइंट शैली डिड नॉट आउट राइटली रिजेक्ट दी क्लासिकल वैल्यूज ही डिडेंट आउट राइटली आउट राइटली रिजेक्ट दी इंपॉर्टेंस ऑफ साइंस इंपॉर्टेंस ऑफ रीजन इंपॉर्टेंस ऑफ प्रोग्रेशन But he also emphasized on the power of imagination. Imagination is also very much powerful, and power of imagination ही है जो creator का काम करती है. Poets are not rude; they are not semi-barbarian. In fact, according to P. B. Shelley, poets are the institutions. Poets are the lawmakers. Poets are the prophets. They can even see the future. प्रोफेसि भी करते हैं वो पोएट होते हैं पोएट्स आर दो इमेजिन एंड एक्सप्रेस दिस इन डिस्ट्रक्टिबल ऑर्डर आर नॉट ओनली दर्स ऑफ लैंग्वेज एंड ऑफ म्यूजिक ऑफ द डांस एंड आर्किटेक्चर एंड स्टेचुरी एंड पेंटिंग दे आर द इंस्टीट्यूशन ऑफ लॉज हु आर द पोएट्स पोएट्स आर नॉट मियरली द कंपोजर्स poet are not merely one who uses language beautifully who talks about dance but poets are the institutions of laws and founders of civil society and the inventors of the arts of life and the teachers who draw into a certain propinquity with the beautiful and true that partial apprehensions of the agencies of the invisible world which is called religion poets ke liye two points from this slide poets are the institutions of law poets are the law makers and poets are the prophets right poets are the creator of founder of the society and hence civilization civilization comes from society and poets were the basic who formed society all right एंड पोएट्स आर द लेजिस्लेटर्स पोएट्स आर द प्रोफेट ये दोनों काम पोएट के जिम्मे है एंड देन द डेफिनेशन ऑफ पोएट्री अकॉर्डिंग टू पी वी शाली द पोएट वॉट इज पोएट्री पोएम इज द वेरी इमेज ऑफ द लाइफ एक्सप्रेस इन इट्स इटरनल ट्रूथ पोएट्री इज द वेरी इमेज ऑफ लाइफ अ पोएम इज द वेरी इमेज ऑफ लाइफ expressed in its eternal truth the creation of actions according to the unchangeable forms of human nature as existing in the mind of the creator poem kya hai poem is the very image of kiski image hai not image of human being not image of a particular being but image of life when you read the poetry of homer you can visualize you can imagine what was the society at that time what was the life at that time how were people living and how would how were they affected by the divine power when you read shakespeare you can understand the society of the time you can understand elizabethan society elizabethan rulings right aap sab samajh sakte ho poem is the very very image of life and life is expressed in eternal truth that is poetry right the creation of actions according to the unchangeable forms of human nature as existing in the mind of the creator jo creator ke mind mein hota hai wahi batata hai so what is the task of the poet the task of the poet is to interpret and present the poem shali's metaphor here explicates 
poetry is a mirror which makes beautiful that which is distorted poetry works like a mirror और मिरर क्या काम करता है जो खराब है उसको भी अच्छा दिखाता है कहते हैं ना कि शीशा भी झूठ बोलता है पोएट्री इज द मिरर विच मेक्स ब्यूटीफुल दैट विच इज डिस्टॉर्टेड जो डिस्टॉर्टेड है उसको भी ब्यूटीफुल बनाने का काम करता है पोएट राइट और पोएम इज द इमेज ऑफ लाइफ एंड देन ही टॉक्स अबाउट मीट्रिकल वर्सेस आर नॉट मीट्रिकल वर्सेस प्रोज एंड पोएट्री and he prefers poetry to prose right shali distinguishes between measured and unmeasured language measured language is poetic language unmeasured language is the language of prose the former being poetry which uses meter i e you measure out the syllables per line and the latter being prose and then poetry is superior to prose even though Both use language. क्यों पोएट्री सुपीरियर है बिकॉज पोएट्री ऑल्सो टैप्स इन टू द पॉसिबिलिटीज ऑफ साउंड द लैंग्वेज ऑफ पोएट्स हैज एवर अफेक्टेड सर्टिन यूनिफॉर्म एंड हारमोनियस रिकरेंस ऑफ साउंड विदाउट विच इट वर नॉट पोएट्री एंड विच इज स्कॉर्सली लेस इंडिस्पेंसिबल टू द कम्युनिकेशन ऑफ इट्स फ्लुएंस than the words themselves without reference to that particular author right poetry and is the measured language and prose is unmeasured language and pb shali prefers the language of measured he prefers poetry right and then he compares poetry and history right ek aisa question hai jo since the time of plato compare ho raha hai poetry versus history here you see in the image right there are two images in the background the one image belongs the one image is the image of library and the second is that of mirror this is the poetry you see you see everything through the mirror aap hote aage hain chal aage rahe hote hain aur gaadi ka shisha jo hai wo dekh piche raha hota hai aur ye history hai do records hai right history kiska record hai records of the events records of the incidents that had already happened a story of particular facts is as a mirror which obscures and distorts that which should be beautiful poetry is a mirror which makes beautiful that which is distorted this is the statement this is the line of uh, mr p vishali poetry has the power to recreate to recreate something that was already beautiful but now distorted it can be remade इसको फिर से रीमेड किया जा सकता है फिर से बनाया जा सकता है ब्यूटीफुल बनाया जा सकता है हिस्ट्री टॉक्स अबाउट फैक्ट्स एंड पोएट्री नेवर टॉक्स अबाउट फैक्ट्स पोएट्री इज द रिक्रिएटिव पोएट्री रिप्रेजेंट्स द लाइफ आज इट इज राइट ये लाइफ का इमिटेशन करती है और हिस्ट्री सिर्फ फैक्ट्स पर होती है हिस्ट्री इज ए रिट्रीवेबल एंड दिस इज द पावर ऑफ पोएट्री पोएट्री इस अब यहां पर बैकग्राउंड में देखिएगा क्या बना है दिस इज नेचर एंड नेचर की जो ब्यूटी है ना इट इज द हिडन ट्रेजर एंड पोएट्री अनवील करती है इस हिडन ट्रेजर को सबके पास वो कैपेसिटी नहीं है पोटेंशियल नहीं है टू आइडेंटिफाई द हिडन ब्यूटी पोएट्री लिफ्ट द वेल फ्रॉम द हिडन ब्यूटी ऑफ द वर्ल्ड एंड मेक्स फेमिलियर ऑब्जेक्ट बी as if they were not familiar it reproduces all that it represents and the impersonations clothed in elysian light stand thence forward in the minds of those who have once contemplated them as memorials of that gentle and exalted content which extends itself over all thoughts and actions with which it exists poetry poet also talks about the everyday topic also talks about everyday subject but when we read poetry when we read the poem skylark when we read the poem daffodils when we read the poem nightingale wo nightingale nahi hai jis nightingale ko we know wo skylark nahi hai jis skylark ko hum jante hain wo skylark a bit different from other skylark Our Shalij Skylark is a poet, is a philosopher, is a child, is innocent. It works like a nymph. So, 
ऑर्डिनरी चीज को इन ऑर्डिनरी बनाने का काम जो है ये पोएट्री का है और ये पावर है इसलिए पोएट्री लिफ्ट द वेल फ्रॉम दी हिडन ब्यूटी ऑफ द वर्ल्ड एंड दैट स्काई लार्क इज द हिडन ब्यूटी एंड टी आर पी बी शैली हेज ओपन द ब्यूटी ऑफ दैट बर्ड स्काई लार्क उसको ओपन करने का काम किया है दिस इज द पावर ऑफ पोएट्री एंड फाइनली वट इज द पावर ऑफ द पोएट एंड हियर जस्ट सी द बैकग्राउंड पावर ऑफ द पोएट इज द पावर ऑफ अ लॉ मेकर फाइनल जो कंक्लूडिंग लाइन है डिफेंस ऑफ पोएट्री की पोएट्स आर द अनएक्नोलेज लेजिस्लेटर्स ऑफ द वर्ल्ड राइट जो कोई लॉ मेकर होता है ही मेक्स लॉज फॉर हिज ओन कंट्री बट जो पोएट है ना पोएट मेक्स लॉज फॉर द इंटायर यूनिवर्स फॉर द होल वर्ल्ड पोएट्स आर द अनएक्नोलेज लेजिस्लेटर्स ऑफ द वर्ल्ड पोएट्स आर द Hero fans of an unapprehended inspiration, the mirrors of the gigantic shadows which futurity casts upon the present, the words which express what they understand not, the trumpets which sing to battle and feel not what they inspire, the influence which is moved not but moves. Poets are the unacknowledged legislators of the world. दुनिया के वो ऐसे लेजिस्लेटर्स हैं ऐसे कानून बनाने वाले लोग हैं जो अनएक्नोलेज हैं दे आर नॉट एक्नोलेज बाय द सोसाइटी बट इन फैक्ट दे मेक लॉज एंड दियर लॉज मेक द वर्ल्ड ब्यूटीफुल दिस इज द कंक्लूजन ऑफ अ डिफेंस ऑफ पोइजी आई होप यू हैव एंजॉयड टूडे क्लास यूड हैव एंजॉयड द लेक्चर यूड हैव एंजॉयड द कंपेरिजन ऑफ द टू क्रिटिक्स थॉमस लपीकॉक एंड पी बी शाली एंड अगर पसंद आया हो तो शेयर करिएगा लाइक करिएगा चैनल को सब्सक्राइब करिएगा एंड कॉमेंट बॉक्स में जरूर जाकर के अपनी फीडबैक दीजिएगा वेट करूंगा आपका थैंक यू ऑल द बेस्ट नेक्स्ट लेक्चर जल्दी ही आएगा किस पर आएगा दैट इज अंडर द वेल इन द वेल एंड आई विल अनवेल वेन आई कम टू यू अगेन थैंक यू बाय बाय जय हिंद गुड लक